Hi everyone, let's continue one more tutorial that is based on CFA, confirmatory factor analysis. Confirmatory factor analysis we are going to run in Jamovi. And uh, I want to show you confirmatory factor analysis, principal component analysis we have already finished in my last video. And confirmatory factor analysis today we will discuss. But before that, I just want to share with you structural equation modeling and why we need confirmatory factor analysis. And what is the difference between EFA and CFA? EFA stands for exploratory factor analysis and CFA stands for confirmatory factor analysis. So basically, uh, structure equation modeling, it is a technique of multivariate statistical analysis. And uh, this technique, it is a basically combination of factor analysis and multiple regression. And uh, when we are calling SAM, it is a CFA plus path analysis structural model. And in this video, we would uh, go for confirmatory factor analysis. Those factors we had identified, now we have to confirm all these factors. And uh, this one is the CFA plus path analysis that will be that will become SAM, structure equation model. So confirmatory factor analysis, uh, SAM and CFA can redesign the model and compare with the older model if older model is not good fit. Right. And uh, researchers using software programs like Amos, Lizrel, Statistica, etc. These are the number of the softwares. Those are available. You can go for structure equation modeling with the help of these softwares. Application of SAM is to test complex relationships simultaneously. This is the beauty of SAM. Uh, actually, simultaneously, we can check a complex relationship. Several regression analysis and factor analysis simultaneously can be operational. So what we have to do, let me explain you difference between EFA and CFA. The same uh, word file I had already shared with you in the structure equation modeling playlist. And you can go there and you can watch this video. The same uh, data I had shared over there. Difference between EFA, exploratory factor analysis, and CFA, confirmatory factor analysis. Factors are predetermined and then structure is confirmed through CFA. And EFA, if your instrument has never been explored before, the aim of CFA is to confirm to what extent your model fits the data. A CFA is computed to investigate how well the hypothesized factor structures fit with the data. The fit test seeks to find a non-significant result indicating good fit to the data. CFA is a part of a larger analysis framework called structure equation modeling, which combines CFA and path analysis. So what we have to do, interpretation of result model fit indices, and I will discuss after this. Let me go there in Jamovi, and I want to show you how we are, we are going to run CFA. Let me open my file, and same file I will use. This is the my same file, and this is the SAM data is here. Let me open this file. And uh, this file is open, right? EC1, EC2, EC3, GP1, GP2, and all. I want to check the same file. I have to run confirmatory factor analysis. So I will go there, factors, CFA, confirmatory factor analysis. And let me transfer all my variables towards this side. This is my factor one. Then add a new factor that is GP1, GP2, GP3. And this is factor two. I'm not renaming all these factors, right? Factor one and factor two, factor three only. And uh, then PV1, PV2 and PV3, we will transfer towards this side. No, we have not added. So I will return back all these variables. So let me add new variable. And this is factor three and I will transfer all these three values then further is we would add one more variable factor four and this is pv1 pv2 pv3 so these are my four factors 
And now you can see moment I had transferred factor 1, factor 2, factor 3, factor 4. All the indicators estimates are here. Right. And these are the P value. And further is we will go for residual covariance. I do not require options, nothing. Only we will confirm factor variance should be equal to 1. Estimates, yes, we require standardized estimates. A moment I had checked this box, standardized estimates are there. These are the standardized estimates, correct? And uh, further is model fit. I would explain you SRMR also. We have to go for this. So all these values, RM, RMSCA and p-value, this one's the test for exact fit. Everything is here. And uh, we can say RMSA is the bad indicator. SRMR is also bad indicator. Good fit means bad fit. And this is the good fit CFI and TLI. And that should be above 0.9, right? So these are under, under control. And SRMR, RMSA, that should be uh, below 0.08, right? So RMSA should be below 0.08. So that is also under control, right? Means our model is good. Mo model is good. Then after that, path diagram we require. So let me open this path diagram also. So now this path diagram will open but in this uh, path diagram there are no values on these arrows like amos right this is the covariances in between the factors as a thumb rule we say these values means if the fc1 to ec1 ec2 ec3 those are explaining this latent variable fc1 right we are measuring fc1 with the help of these ec1 ec2 ec3 there should be we can say this one is the these this one is the value should be on the above point five. But when we will talk about covariance in between all these factors FC one in between FC one FC two FC two FC three FC three FC four or FC one to FC three FC two to FC four and all these values should be less than point five. This is the thumb rule. And here is, we can find out these, these are the factors. These are the standard estimates are very good. Means they are, they are explaining this variable, right? This is the latent variable FC1. So 0 0.794, 0 0.863, 0 0.708, all are above 0 0.822, 0 0.85, 0 0.785, 0 0.722, 0 0.80. 0 0.801 all are above 0.5 but when we will talk about factor estimate what is the covariances among all these factors factor 1 factor 2 factor 3 so these values we can find out here factor 1 to factor 2 0 0.4883 means it is below 0.5 and then factor 1 to factor 3 0.426 Again, it is a less than 0.5 and factor 1 to factor 4, that is 0.422. What will happen if these values will be above 0.5? That means there would be multicollinearity issue, right? So it means why we had kept both these factors, let's say in between factor 1 and factor 2. Covariance in between these factors, it is above 0.5 or nearby 0.7 or 0.8. So means there is no use we have kept both these factors independently, right? And there would be multicularity issue. So the solution of this problem of the multicularity, what we have to do, we should merge both these factors into a one factor means EC1, EC2, EC3, GP1, GP2, G3. So that will become EC1, EC2, EC3. And further it is, uh, both all these factors could be merged. So then multicularity issue, somehow it would be resolved. So I hope uh, this one is the uh, chi-square 136 and degree of freedom 48. So what we have to do, we will divide chi-square 136, 136 divided by 40, it would be somewhere around 2 point something. So that is correct. So this value, uh, I would show you how we have to measure these values. Chi-square, lower value indicates better fit. So it should be below, below 5 point. Uh, I mean, uh, this one is the 
chi square value lower values indicate better fit and let me show you chi square value is 136 right then semen should be below point below 5 and further we will go for rmsea value lower values indicate better fit 0 0.06 and somewhere is some statistician are saying 0 0.08 srmr lower values indicate better fit that is 0 0.08 comparative fit index that is a higher value indicates better fit and uh, this one is the tucker lewis index higher value that should be greater than 0.95 so means our model is fit because that is the model fit indices so uh, i'm sure uh, you can understand how we have to run cfa uh, with the help of Jamovi and how we can interpret the results. And these results are more similar to what we had performed in AMOS and uh, other softwares. So I hope this video would be helpful. Thank you. Stay tuned. Keep watching.